Hello my dear students. So now I am going to discuss the questions from your textbook. In the lesson we discuss what turning effect of force is and under turning effect of force we discuss what moment of force is that is the force into the perpendicular distance from the point of application of force to the rotational axis. So that leads to the turning effect. If we apply two forces in the opposite direction equal magnitude but if they are coplanar parallel forces then it becomes the couple of forces. Under those we looked at some examples where we use these forces in day to day life and we did calculations related to moment of force. So this is the miscellaneous exercise given in your textbook. The first question. The rod AB is 1.2 meters long. So the rod AB is 1.2 meters long. It is kept in equilibrium by suspending it at the center. So here you can see a uniform rod 1.2 meters long and from the center it has been suspended. So you are, here you can see this length is 0.6 meters by the total length is 1.2 meters. Then you can see there is a 10 Newton weight attached at this end that is 0.A. 0.6 meters from the center. But on this side, here you can see point B is marked, but there is an arrow shown here at a certain distance that is 0.3 meters from the center point of the rod. Now, if a weight of 10 Newton is held at the end A, that is this, what force held at a point 0.3 meters away from the center of the rod would bring it back to equilibrium. So what will happen? Initially when you attach the 10 Newton weight here, the rod will rotate in this direction. That will be the anti-clockwise direction. If you want to bring it to equilibrium, what should you do? You have to put a weight on the other side so that there is an equal moment of force acting in the clockwise direction. So when the anticlockwise moment is equal to the clockwise moment, it comes to equilibrium. And that is what we need to find here. The weight that has to be attached there. So here I will write it as W. So to be or to have equilibrium or to achieve equilibrium, we can say when the rod is at equilibrium what is the concept the clockwise moment is equal to anti clockwise moment So then, what is the clockwise moment? That is that direction. This is going to be the clockwise. So it will be W into 0.3 meters. That should be equal to the anti-clockwise moment. That is this. That is going to be 10 Newton into 0 0.6 meters. If we rearrange this, W is going to be equal to 10 Newton into 0 0.6 meters divided by 0 0.3 meters. And if we simplify that, 0 0.6 and 0 0.3 can be simplified to get 2. So 10 into 2, 20 Newton. So we need to attach or suspend a 20 Newton weight in order to bring the rod to equilibrium. So there, if we look at the question, if a weight of 10 Newton is held at the end A, what force held at the point 0.3 meters away from the center of the rod would bring it back to equilibrium. So they are since they ask as a force, we will have to write this 20 Newton as force. So force 
needed to bring the rod to equilibrium. That is going to be 20 Newton. So by attaching a 20 Newton weight or suspending a 20 Newton weight, you can bring the rod to equilibrium because the force applied will be 20 Newton. So with that students, I will move on to the next question. Determine the sum of moments of the three forces about point A, point B and point C. So here you can see a diagram is given to your students. So as you can see, this is a rod or a plank of wood. We can say a strip of wood. So that is given there. Then you can see at the middle point. Now here initially if you look at the diagram, the distances are marked from here to here. 2 meters. Here to here 2, 2 and 2. So the total length of the rod is 8 meters. So if you look at this point B, 2 and 2, 4 meters. So this new 20 Newton force is at the midpoint of the rod acting upwards. When you look at the other forces, now here you can see there is a 10 Newton force down and another 10 Newton force acting downwards. So there are three forces, they are all parallel forces, different lines of action and the magnitudes. If you take this 10 and this 10, those are equal in magnitudes. The 20 Newton force is different from these two forces. So here, determine the sum of moments of the three forces about point A. So first one is point A. We will consider point A there. So that is the first one around point A. Now if you take point A from here this force is acting at 2 meters downwards. If you take the next force at point B it's acting upwards. The distance is 2 meters plus 2 meters 4 meters. Then again we have this third force, again from here to here, 2, 4, 6 meters from point A, again acting downwards. So all three forces are away from point A. And out of those, the 10 Newton, 10 Newton forces are acting downwards. So they are going to give a clockwise moment of force. That 20 Newton force is going to give a an anti-clockwise moment of force. Force. So we need to add all the moment of forces in order to find the result. So here around point A, resultant of moments is going to be the first one 10 Newton force into 2 meters. Then the second one opposite direction. So it has to be a minus value. I told you all clockwise is positive, anti-clockwise is considered as negative. So here minus 20 Newton into what is the distance 2 meter plus 2 meter 4 meters. Again we have the 10 Newton force downwards. So that is going to be plus y clockwise. So 10 Newton, but what is the distance? 2 meters, 2 meters, 2 meters. So that has to be 6 meters from point A. So 10 Newton into 6 meters. I will rearrange this. So I will calculate the moments 10 into 2, 20 Newton meter minus 20 into 4, 80 Newton meter, again plus 10 into 6, 60 Newton meter. So here 20 Newton meter and 60 Newton meter, they are in the same direction, clockwise moments, they get added up. 80 Newton meter minus 80 Newton meter 
so the clockwise and anti-clockwise moment of forces are equal so that has to be zero the resultant is zero so the rod will be at equilibrium why the resultant of moment of forces is equal to zero because the clockwise and anti-clockwise moment of forces are equal is that clear to you also that so then we will do the next calculation that is around point b okay so b part is point b so if i again go back and look at the diagram now you can see students at point b only we have the 20 newton force acting upwards so because of that we cannot take that as the moment of force why the perpendicular distance is zero it's at point b so we only need to consider this 10 newton force and this 10 newton force so around point b around this point this is going to rotate in the clockwise direction this is going to rotate in the anti clockwise direction so those are the two moments of force and what is the distance from point b this is 2 meters this is also 2 meters so i am sure you all can guess the answer if we do the calculation again here resultant of the moment of forces around point B. So that is equal to as I told you all 10 newton into 2 meters minus 10 newton into 2 meters. Why? One is the clockwise, the other one is the anti-clockwise moment. So here 20 newton meter minus 20 newton meter again that is going to be zero. So that also confirms that the rod is at equilibrium. When the resultant of moment of forces are zero, the rod or the object has to be at equilibrium. So then we have the third part where we need to calculate the resultant of the moments of the three forces around point C. As I explained for point A, point A, C is also similar because it's at the other end of the rod but the directions are different. Now here you can see for point C all the forces are towards this side. So the 10 newton force will give rise to an anti-clockwise rotation. This 10 newton force also will give rise to an anti-clockwise rotation. So for this one from here to here 2 meters but from point C to this one 2, 4, 6 meters. So the distance is 6 meters whereas if you take the 20 newton force from point C when you consider it will give a clockwise moment of force that will lead to the clockwise rotation of the rod. So we have to find the resultant of all the three moment of forces. So 20 newton will be taken as the positive moment whereas the 210 newton forces will give the negative moment of forces because you all know clockwise is usually taken as the positive value and anti-clockwise is taken as the negative value. So then if we do the calculation C part point C. So resultant of moment of forces about point C is equal to I will write the positive clockwise rotation first that is the 20 newton force that is at point B. So 20 newton 
and you all can remember students the distance you all can look at your textbook 2 meters plus 2 meters 4 meters so that is 4 meters that is the positive or the clockwise moment whereas the other two minus 10 newton into 2 meters minus another 10 newton into 6 meters i have explained this to you all before so here what happens students 20 newton into 4 meters 80 newton meter minus 10 into 2 so again 20 newton meters minus 60 newton meters so that will be equal to 80 newton meter minus 80 newton meter the resultant will be zero so from all the calculations what can you all understand the rod is at equilibrium so that is obvious no students we will go back and look at the diagram if you look at the diagram 20 newton upwards 10 newton down 10 newton down you all can also remember the resultant of forces for these two there will be a force acting downwards 20 newton and that will be a collinear force along with the 20 newton force acting upwards so downward 20 newtons upward 20 newtons it becomes zero so the rod has to be at equilibrium even when we consider it in the form of moment of forces that is the same thing so around point a clockwise rotation clockwise rotation anti-clockwise rotation so around point A, you can see resultant of moments 10 into 2 meters, this first one, then minus 20 newton into 4 meters, plus again 10 newton into 6 meters. So when we do the calculation, 20 newton meter minus 80 newton meter plus 60 newton meter, that will be equal to 80 newton meter minus 80 newton meter, resultant is 0. Again, if we calculate around point B, the same way, resultant of the moment of forces around point B, you have 10 Newton into 2 meters, the clockwise, and the other one, 10 Newton into 2 meters, anti-clockwise. Why? Here the point B is in the middle of the rod. So, both forces are on either side. But the 20 Newton force is along point B. So we don't consider that for the moment of force. Then we have the last point, point C, resultant of moment of forces about point C, similar to point A. As I told you, the directions are different. So here we have the positive moment of force, 20 Newton into 4 meters. But the other two are anti-clockwise. 10 newton into 2 meters, 10 newton into 6 meters. So 80 newton meter minus 80 newton meter, you get the resultant as 0. So from all the calculations, you all can understand the resultant of all the moment of forces acting there, make the rod to be at equilibrium. So those are the questions given in your textbook students. Now I will move on to some extra questions. So extra question 1. Write the factors that affect moment of force. So what are the factors? One is the force, other one is the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the force or axis of rotation to the point of application of force. Those are the two factors. force that is the first factor then the next one is perpendicular distance distance from the axis of rotation to the point of application of force. 
So those are the two factors that we incorporate for the equation as well. When we say moment of force, when we calculate it, we multiply force by perpendicular distance between the axis of rotation and the force. So then the next question. Write an equation to calculate the moment of a force. What I just said. So moment or you can say moment of a force. Since they have asked as moment of force, we will say moment of force that is equal to force multiplied by perpendicular distance. Distance from the axis of rotation to the force. You can say point of application of force or you can say to the force. Since we are writing it in the equation, we can write it as force. So if we look at the question students, write the factors that affect moment of force. One is force, second one is perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the point of application of force. Then the second question, write an equation to calculate the moment of force. That is moment of force is equal to force into perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the force. So from this you all know students, force has the unit newtons and perpendicular distance is in meters. So the unit that is the standard unit of moment of force is newton meters. We don't have to write that here but I'm just recalling what we have discussed in the lesson. So with that I will move on to the next question. Extra question 2. The diagram given below shows the moment of force. So here there is a moment of force shown to you all. A metal plate X can rotate around a nail O. So here this is a metal plate that is marked as X and it can rotate around a nail O. So this is the nail O. That is the axis of rotation. A 10 Newton force is applied. So here you can see a 10 Newton force is applied. That is applied here according to the diagram at point A. So those are the information that is shown in the diagram. And also you all can see this point is marked as point B and the distance from the axis of rotation to point B is 2 meters whereas from O that is axis of rotation to point A is 0.2 plus 0.2 that is 0.4 meters. So the first question, what is the perpendicular distance between the point of rotation and the point of application of force when force is applied at point A. So when it is applied at point A, we want you to calculate the perpendicular distance. Second one, what is the perpendicular distance between the point of rotation and the point of application of force when force is applied at point B? So if you applied the force here, what is the perpendicular distance? Then the third one, Compare the magnitude of moment of force when 10 Newton force is applied at point A and point B. So when the magnitude of force that is 10 Newton is applied at point A and point B, what will happen to the moment of forces? You need to compare the two values. So with that, I will move on to the next slide where we have the fourth part of the question. What is the moment of force? when the 10 Newton force is applied at point A. Calculate the force that needs to be applied at point B to achieve a moment of force equal to the value in part 4 above. What is the moment of force when the 10 Newton force is applied at point B? And the last question, calculate the moment of force when the 20 Newton force is applied at point A. So those are the question students, we will answer them one by one. So I am sure since I read the questions to you all, you all would have copied it down. You can do it, you can try it by yourself first and then you can look at my 
discussion. So now I will move on to the first part of the question. What is the perpendicular distance between the point of rotation and the point of application of force when force is applied at point A? So here you can see this is the metal strip. This is point A, again a small diagram to show you all what happens. So what is the perpendicular distance from O to A? Point 2 plus point 2. So that is equal to 0.4 meters. So, what is the perpendicular distance? Perpendicular distance. Distance equals 0 0.2 meters plus 0 0.2 meters. That is equal to 0 0.4 meters. The first part. Then the next question. What is the perpendicular distance between the point of rotation and the point of application of force when force is applied at point B? So point B you can see in the diagram it's here. So from O to point B it's only 0 0.2 meters. So here perpendicular distance distance equals 0 0.2 meters. Then the third question. Compare the magnitude of moment of force when 10 Newton force is applied at point A and point B. So we need to calculate. So moment is what? F into B. So at point A, if you calculate the moment, the force is 10 Newton, distance is 0 0.4 meters. That is going to be 4 Newton meter. If you calculate at point B, again the 10 Newton force, but you can see the distance we have written it above also, it's 0 0.2 meters. So that will be equal to 2 Newton meter. So from the values what can you say? Moment at point A is greater than the moment at point B. You all know the reason. What is the reason? The distance to point A is greater than the distance to point B. We don't have to write the reason but we just need to compare the magnitude of moment of force when 10 Newton force is applied at point A and point B. So we have to say magnitude of moment of force is greater at point A compared to point B. So that is how we compare the magnitudes. At point A it's greater and at point B it's less. So that's those are the answers for the first three questions. I will move on to the next one. What is the moment of force when the 10 Newton force is applied at point A? So what is the moment of force? We have already calculated it also. You all can remember it was 4 Newton meter. So here moment, you can write as moment or moment of force F into D. So that is going to be 10 Newton force into, you can remember students, the distance 0.2 meters from O to here point 2, here to here point 2. So the total distance is 0 0.4 meters. So that has to be 0 0.4 meters. That will be 4 Newton meter. 10 into 0 0.4 meters. So 4 Newton meters. Then the fifth question. 
Calculate the force that needs to be applied at point B to achieve a moment of force equal to the value in part 4 above. So here we have got the value as 4 Newton meters. We need to calculate the force that needs to be applied in order to get the same magnitude for the moment of force. So here again moment equals force into distance but we know the moment 4 Newton meter. We don't know the force but we know the distance. O to B, that is the axis of rotation to point B, it's 0 0.2 meters. 0 0.2 meters. So, 4 Newton meter divided by 0 0.2 meters is equal to F. That will be 20 Newton. So, you here you can see the force has to be doubled by the distance is half. This is point 0.2, a, point A is point 0.4 meters. So, since at point A we apply 10 Newton force, at point B we need to apply 20 Newton force in order to get the same moment of force. You all can understand that relationship. We have done an activity to show how the moment of force depends on the force as well as the distance. So with that students, I will move on to the next slide. What is the moment of force when the 10 Newton force is applied at point B? So earlier we calculated the force but here if you apply 10 Newton force here as well, what is the moment of force? So here again we can say moment equals F into D that is again going to be 10 Newton into distance is 0 0.2 meter. So that is going to be 2 Newton meter. That is the moment of force. Is that okay students? Then the seventh one. Calculate the moment of force when the 20 Newton force is applied at point A. The 20 Newton force instead of 10 Newton. Now we are going to apply 20 Newton force there. So what is the moment? Again moment. So students, you will always have to write the equation before you do the calculation. Although we are doing it again and again here, still it's better if you write the equation. So that you will remember to write it for your exam as well. So, moment is equal to force into perpendicular distance. Here, the force is going to be 20 Newton now. Still, the distance is the same, 0.4 meters. Why? From here to here, here to here. So, 0.2 plus 0.2, 0 0.4 meters. So, that is going to be 8 Newton meter. So, from all these calculations, students, you all can understand the effect of force, the magnitude of force on moment of force as well as the effect of the perpendicular distance. You can see when the perpendicular distance increases, the moment of force increase. Here, when the force increases, the moment of force increases. So that is the relationship. I'm sure you were also able to get the calculations correctly. With that, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 3. A metal strip X can rotate around the axis O. So, this is a metal strip X. This is the axis O. There it has been marked as axis of rotation. So, it can rotate around that. And here you can see 0.4 meters at point B. There is a weight W. And on this side, at the at a distance of 0.3 meters at point A, there is a force of 20 Newton acting downwards. So the questions: What is the moment of force around O when a weight of 20 Newton is attached to point A? Second one: Is the above moment clockwise or anticlockwise? Is the moment of force clockwise or anticlockwise when the force is applied at point B. 
what should be the values of the clockwise moment and anticlockwise moment if the metal strip must be at equilibrium and the last question what is the weight that should be attached to point b to maintain the strip at equilibrium when a weight of 20 newton is attached to point a so those are the questions students we will answer them one by one the first question what is the moment of force around o when a weight of 20 newton is attached at point a so you can remember the diagram students this is the diagram this is point a a 20 newton force is attached there so moment of force we have to write and also here you can see the distance 0.3 meters so those are the values we need for the calculation moment equals f into d the force is 20 newton and the perpendicular distance also of is 0 0.3 meters so 20 into 0 0.3 6 newton meters that is the moment of force around o when a weight of 20 newton is attached to point a the second one is the above moment clockwise or anticlockwise what is the direction here you can see this is the point of rotation and this way is the force so the metal strip will rotate in that direction that's going to be the clockwise rotation so that is going to be clockwise moment clockwise moment then the next one is the moment of force clockwise or anticlockwise when the force is applied at point b so here you can see student at point b this is the axis of rotation the force is here so this way it's going to be anticlockwise so this way was clockwise this is going to be anticlockwise so here the answer is anticlockwise you can say anti-clockwise moment so i am sure students you all were also able to answer these questions correctly you would have calculated the moment of force f into d 20 newton into 0.3 that's 6 newton meters then that is a clockwise moment of force here you can see it's going to be a clockwise rotation and if it is at point b then it will be an anti-clockwise moment of force we will continue with the questions the fourth one what should be the values of the clockwise moment and anti-clockwise moment if the metal strip must be at equilibrium what should be the value they should be equal so here the values have to be equal you can say values have to be same or they have to be equal then what is the weight that should be attached to point b to maintain the strip at equilibrium when a weight of 20 newton is attached to point a so when a weight of 20 newton is attached to point a we calculated the moment of force as 6 newton meters you all can remember that in the previous slide so here we need to calculate the force w we need to calculate this so they are at equilibrium the clockwise moment will be equal to anti clockwise moment so students we have calculated the clockwise moment we can use that value or else again you can substitute whatever is more convenient for you all you can use that method i will substitute here again so that is going to be 20 newton into 0 0.3 meters that is equal to w into 0 0.4 meters 
So when you rearrange, it will be 20 Newton into 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.4 meters that is equal to W. So if you calculate the value there, 5, so that is going to be 5 into 3, 15 Newton is going to be W. So again you can see students, here it's 20 Newton force 0.3 meters, here it's 0.4 meters so the weight is less, 15 Newton. So then the rod will be at equilibrium or it will be, the metal strip will be at equilibrium. So is that clear to you? At equilibrium, clockwise moment should be equal to anti-clockwise moment. So, 20 Newton into 0 0.3 meters will be equal to W into 0 0.4 meters. So, when you calculate, you will get the weight as 15 Newton. I am sure you got the same value. With that students, I will move on to the next slide. Extra question 4. So, a diagram is given to you. We have discussed this example. A spanner used to screw tighten or loosen the screw nail. So, there we apply moment of force. How does that work? By applying a force far away from the screw nail, the work becomes easy. The force is decreased. So, we look at the question. Before that, if you look at the diagram, you can see the distance D is given and the force F is shown to you and you can see the screw nail there or the nut there. Calculate the moment of force shown above. So what is moment of force? Moment of force, force into perpendicular distance. Distance from axis to force. So that will be equal to F into D because the values are given to you as F into D. Then the second question. Is the above moment clockwise or anti-clockwise? Since the force is downwards, it will rotate this way. So, what is that? Clockwise moment. Clockwise. So, you would have answered these questions correctly. You would have calculated the moment but without values, just a substitution F into D and you all know it is a clockwise moment. With that students, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 5. 12 meter uniform rod AB was suspended from the center. So here you can see it is a 12 meter uniform rod. It has been suspended from the center. So you can see the distance from the center to point A, 0 0.6 meters. And from the center to point B, again 0 0.6 meters. And also you can see a 10 Newton force hanging from here. 0 0.2, from 0 0.2 meters from A, there is a point C. And there, there is a 7.5 Newton weight hanging there or the forces applied are shown to you. And from here to here, you can see the distance is 0.4 meters. And on this side, there is a force of X shown in the diagram. Now, let's look at the questions. So, the first question, what is the anti-clockwise moment due to the 10 Newton force? So, here you can see students. This side is going to be the clockwise rotation or the clockwise moment that will be caused by the force X. And on this side, there are two forces that will give rise to the anti-clockwise moment. One is the 10 Newton force, other one is the 7.5 Newton force. So the first question is to calculate the anti-clockwise moment due to the 10 Newton force. Then what is the anti-clockwise moment due to the 7.5 Newton force that is this one. Then what is the total anti-clockwise moment of force that is the sum of the two moment of forces. Then the fourth one the rod is maintained at equilibrium by the force X. 
suspended from point B that is shown there. What is the value of x? So those are the values that you need to calculate. Let's do the calculations one by one. The first one, what is the anti-clockwise moment due to the 10 Newton force? So the first one due to the 10 Newton force. Here you can see. So moment equals F into D. What is F? 10 Newton force and D from here to here it's 0.6 meters. So that will be equal to 6 Newton meter. That is the anti-clockwise moment due to the 10 Newton force. Then what is the anti-clockwise moment due to the 7.5 Newton force? So here again moment equals F into D but the force is 7.5 Newton and the distance from here to here is 0.4 meters. So when you multiply 7.5 by 0.4 we get the value again as that's going to be 3 Newton meter. So that will be the anti-clockwise moment due to 7.5 Newton force. Then the next one. What is the total anti-clockwise moment of force? It will be the sum of the two forces. So here total anti-clockwise anti-clockwise moment of force. So that is going to be 6 Newton meters plus 3 Newton meters that will be equal to 9 Newton meter. That is the total anti-clockwise moment. You add them together. Then the last one. The rod is maintained at equilibrium by the force X suspended from point B. So that is over there. What is the value of X? So if it is equilibrium, you all know students, the resultant of the moment of forces should be equal. So therefore at equilibrium, equilibrium clockwise moment, equals anti-clockwise moment so what is the clockwise moment x into you can see the distance 0 0.6 meters that is equal to the total anti-clockwise moment that we have calculated as 9 newton meters so I will use the calculated value 9 Newton meters. So to calculate x you need to divide 9 by 0 0.6. The answer will be in Newtons. Why the meter and meter cancels off? The answer will be in Newton. So that is going to be 15 Newton. When you divide 9 by 0 0.6 you will get it as 90 over 6 that will be equal to 15 newtons. So this can be equal to 90 over 6 so 15 newton. A very simple calculation. I am sure you all would have done it correctly. So that is how we do these calculations. With that students I will move on to the next question. Extra question 6. What is a couple of forces? You all know what a couple of forces are. There should be two coplanar forces acting in the opposite direction. They should have the equal magnitude and they should be far apart with different lines of action. So then we call that as a couple of forces. That is what you have to write here. Two coplanar Parallel forces with equal magnitudes 
acting in the opposite direction with different lines of action placed far apart is known as a couple of forces so two coplanar parallel forces with equal magnitudes acting in the opposite direction with different lines of actions placed apart is known as a couple of forces so that is what you need to write if you are asked what is a couple of forces so with that students i will move on to the next question extra question 7 is the diagram a couple of forces now here you can see f and e are shown to you when you look at the diagram you all know it is a steering wheel so one is a uh, moment showing the clockwise rotation this also has a clockwise rotation but you all can see the forces are acting in opposite direction so is the diagram a couple of forces yes explain your answer so it has to satisfy all the criteria given with the explanation for couple of couple of forces so here what should you say there are two forces and they are on the same plane so there are uh, we can say f and e f and e are coplanar forces that is one then f and e act in opposite directions f and e have different line of actions that are placed far apart so from this of course students we can't see the magnitudes it's not shown to you but if it is a couple of force it has to have the same magnitude so for it to be an equal couple of forces f and e should have equal magnitudes the directions are opposite but they are equal in magnitude they are coplanar forces and also they have two different line of actions which are placed far apart so when they satisfy all the criteria it becomes a couple of force so i am sure students you also wrote a similar answer if this can be given in any order but you all have to have all the points in order to explain your answer f and e are coplanar forces f and e act in opposite directions f and e have different line of actions that are placed far apart and f and e should have equal magnitudes why did i say should have because that is not shown to us it has to be satisfied then only they become couple of forces so with that students i will move on to the next question extra question 8 light uniform strong plank has been suspended from the middle so this is a light uniform and strong plank so that you can hang the weights there 
The plank is kept at equilibrium by a bunch of plantains of mass 6 kg suspended at 0.5 meters from the center at one end of the plank and a coconut suspended at 2 meters from the center towards the other end of the plank. So that is shown to you in the diagram. Plank is suspended from the center, 0.5 meters from there is a 6 kilogram bunch of plantains. And on this side there is a coconut 2 meters away from the center. So these are the questions. What is the weight of the bunch of plantains? You all know the equation to calculate weight. Weight is equal to mass into gravitational acceleration. Find the anti-clockwise moment of force exerted by the bunch of plantains. So this side is going to be the anti-clockwise moment and this side is going to be the clockwise moment. The third one, find the mass of the coconut. So here the mass of coconut is not given. Under equilibrium, anti-clockwise moment is equal to clockwise moment. So we can calculate the mass of the coconut. So then I will move on to the questions. We will calculate it one by one. First one, what is the weight of the bunch of plantains? What is the weight? W equals mg. What is m? Mass of the bunch of plantains, 6 kilograms. And usually we need to multiply by the gravitational acceleration. What is it? The exact value is 9.8 meters per second squared. But for calculations, we take it as 10 meters per second squared. So 10 meters per second squared. So that is going to be 60 Newton. Kilogram meters per second squared is going to be Newton. 60 Newton is the weight of the bunch of plantains. Then, find the anti-clockwise moment of force exerted by the bunch of plantains. So, anti-clockwise moment. Clockwise moment is equal to F into D. That is equal to, we calculated the force. That is going to be 60 Newton into what is the distance? 0.5 meters. So 0 0.5 meters. 60 into 0 0.5 meters that will become 30 Newton meter. 60 into half. So 30 Newton meter. Then we have the last question. Find the mass of the coconut. So the coconut is hung there in order to bring the rod to equilibrium. So at equilibrium or under equilibrium, the clockwise moment, moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment. So what is clockwise? We don't know the weight of the coconut. I will write it as W into, you can see the distance from the center, 2 meters. That is equal to what, what we calculated here. You can either substitute the values or you can use the final answer. I will use the final answer here, 30 Newton meter. So, if we rearrange this equation, W is equal to 30 Newton meter divided by 2 meters. The answer will be meter and meter cancel off. So, 30 divided by 2, it has to be 15 Newtons. But the question says find the mass of the coconut. So, to find the mass, what is it? Mass is equal to m, but we use the equation w equals mg. So we need to rearrange that. w divided by g will give you the mass. So mass of coconut, coconut is equal to 15 Newton divided by 10 meters per second square. That is the gravitational acceleration. So we will get the value as 
15 divided by 10, 1.5 kilogram. So that is the mass of the coconut. If I go back to the question students, here you can see first we calculated the weight of the bunch of plantains. We had the mass given to us 6 kilogram. We multiplied by gravitational acceleration. So the weight became 60 newton. That is the force. Then we calculated the anti-clockwise moment of force exerted by the bunch of plantains. So anti-clockwise moment was equal to F into D, that is 60 newton into 0 0.5 meters. That was equal to 30 newton meter. And finally, we had to find the mass of the coconut. To do that, we considered the equilibrium where the clockwise moment was equal to anti-clockwise moment. W into 2 meters. W is what I took the weight of coconut as. That was equal to the anti-clockwise moment 30 newton meters. So from there we calculated W as 15 newton and then we needed to calculate the mass of coconut. Again we use the same equation W equals mg. So to find the mass of coconut we need to divide the weight by gravitational acceleration. So 15 by 10, we get the answer as 1.5 kilograms. I am sure even you all got the same values and you all did the calculations correctly. With that students, I will move on to the next slide. Extra question 9. Diagram given below shows potatoes being weighed using an equal arm balance. So this is the normal manual balance. We call it the equal arm balance or a single beam balance. This is the beam or the arm and here on either side there are the pans with the where you put the weight. So here this side we have the pan with weight. So that will show an anti-clockwise rotation. Whereas the substance that need to be weighed is taken into this pan that will have a clockwise rotation. But when the two moments are equal, the balance will be at equilibrium. That is how the salesman weighs the substance that we are going to buy. So diagram given below shows potatoes being weighed using an equal arm balance. The weight is kept in the left pan while the potatoes are filled into the right pan. Questions. What can you say about the anti-clockwise moment in the above? That is this. Calculate the moment of force when a weight of 2 kg is kept in the left pan 25 cm from the midpoint of the beam. The balance comes to equilibrium around the midpoint. Calculate the weight of potatoes that should be in the right pan. So these are the questions. We will answer them one by one. First one, what can you say about the anti-clockwise moment in the above? What can you say about the anti-clockwise moment? This side is going to be 25 centimeters. That is the distance and there will be a weight there. So that is how we will be calculating the anti-clockwise moment. So here you can say anti-clockwise moment will be the product of the weight and here the value is given as 25 centimeters we need to convert it to meters. So if we convert 25 centimeters to meters, we need to divide by 100. So you know it has to be 0 0.25 meters. So here it has to be the product between the weight and 0 0.25 meters. That is what we can say about the anti-clockwise moment in the above. Then the second question, calculate the moment of force when a weight of 2 kg is kept in the left pan 25 cm from the midpoint of the beam. Again the weight is given to you as the mass 2 kg. 
So we need to calculate the weight. What is it? Mass into gravitational acceleration. So here moment, moment is equal to F into D. For F you need to multiply 2 by 10 into D. We already calculated it as 0.25 meters. So that is going to be 20 Newton into 0 0.25 meters. That will be equal to 5 Newton meter. 20 into 0 0.25. When you multiply by 2, it becomes 0 0.5. But here it's 20. So it has to be 5 Newton meters. Then the next question. The balance comes to equilibrium around the midpoint. Calculate the weight of potatoes that should be in the right path. So you all know students, when the distances are equal, the forces have to be equal for the, for the rod to be at equilibrium. So on this side, if we have 2 kilogram weight, there should be 2 kilogram potatoes inside the other path. So directly we can write the answer. But since they have said calculate the weight of potatoes that should be in the right pan, we can say clockwise moment, moment equals anti-clockwise moment, moment. So they are clockwise, this is the potatoes. So I will say weight of the potatoes into 0 0.25 meters. That is equal to again 20 Newton into 0 0.25 meters. So when we simplify these two cancel off, the weight is equal to 20 Newton. But we need to find the Wait, we need to find the weight. So there are no problem. It's going to be 20 Newton potatoes. Weight of potatoes. Weight of potatoes equals 20 Newton. So with that students, we have calculated all the values or we have answered all these questions. What can you say about the anticlockwise moment in the above? Anticlockwise moment will be the product of the weight and 0 0.25 meters. Calculate the moment of force when a weight of 2 kilogram is kept in the left pan 25 centimeter from the midpoint of the beam. So moment is equal to force into distance 2 into 10. Why? Because we need to convert the mass into weight. So 20 Newton into 0 0.25 meters, already we calculated that. So it gives a value of 5 Newton meter. And then to find the weight of potato, we use the equation when there is equilibrium. Clockwise moment equals anti-clockwise moment and we find the weight of potatoes as 20 Newton. Or if it is the mass, it will be 2 kilograms of potatoes. You all are familiar with this from the small grades you have been, you have learned this and you have seen this by experience. The weight what is used here will be equal to the weight of the substance that we are buying. That is the purpose of using this balance, the arm balance. So with that students, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 10. A plank AB is hanging on the wall on a nail by a hole made at point O. So there is a plank that is AB, it's marked here and there is a hole there that is marked as O and there is a nail that is attached to the wall and the plank is hanging on that nail. First question, what is the name given to the two forces acting on the plank as shown in the diagram? What are the two forces? Y acting downwards, X acting upwards. So you can see there, those are coplanar forces, coplanar parallel forces acting in the opposite direction and also they have two different line of actions and they are placed far apart. So what is the name given to that? A couple of forces. Couple of forces. The 
the second question in what direction does the plank move due to the forces x and y so here you can see y will pull it this way x will make it move that way so that's going to be a rotation in the clockwise direction that's a clockwise direction rotate in the clockwise direction clockwise direction there write two examples for the type of forces you mentioned in part 1 above couple of forces we discuss a couple of examples what are they the screwdriver the steering wheel then the corkscrew the wheel brace then opening and closing a tap and also opening and closing the lid of a bottle you can write any two examples here so i will write the example as wheel brace and also using a screwdriver to tighten or loosen a screw nail. Even here you can say a wheel brace to tighten the nuts of a tire or loosen the screw nuts of a tire and also using a screwdriver to tighten or loosen a screw nail. So both are examples of instances where we use couple of forces. So I am sure students you were able to answer these questions correctly. With that I will move on to the next slide where we have extra question 11. Write four instances of couple of forces. So I just mentioned that we all before also what are the instances? Using a wheel brace, using a screwdriver, opening and closing a tap, steering the steering wheel or turning the steering wheel, then screwing, unscrewing a lid of a bottle and also using the cork screw to remove the cork from a bottle. So we need to write four instances of couple of forces. So the first instance we can say rotating the steering wheel. Wheel to turn a vehicle. Then another instance we can say open the tap. Another instance we can say we have already written the wheel brace and also the uh, screwdriver. So here I will use using a corkscrew to remove the cork from a bottle from a bottle then another example we can write unscrew the lid of a bottle. So these are all examples students. You can write any four you like. If you know some more examples also you can write it but you have to make sure it is a couple of forces. Two coplanar parallel forces acting in the opposite direction, different line of actions and also they should be far apart and they should be equal in magnitudes. Then they become a couple of forces. So with that students I will move on to the next question. Extra question 12. Forces exerted to rotate a tap handle is shown below. So here you can see this side it is a 4 Newton force acting upwards 
and this side there is a 2 Newton force acting downwards. What is the question? Is it a couple of forces? Explain your answer. What do you think? It is not a couple of forces. Why? Because the forces have different magnitudes or they are e not equal in magnitudes. So for a couple of forces, the two forces should be equal in magnitude. So here the answer is, is it a couple of forces? No. Explain your answer. The forces, the forces have different magnitudes. So because of that, it, they are not couple of forces. So these are not couple of forces you all have to remember students you have to look at the forces and check whether they satisfy all the criteria if one or two are not satisfied then of course they don't become a couple of forces an example is this because they don't have equal magnitudes they don't come under couple of forces you cannot apply different magnitudes with the hand when you are trying to open the tap unless you use two hands and pull them with two different forces. So they are, it will not be a couple of forces. So with that students, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 30. A manually operated road barrier is shown in the figure given below. A weight of M is suspended to the string attached to one end in order to bring the rod to equilibrium. Assume that the weight of the rod is negligible and gravitational acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. So this is the rod given to you. The weight of the rod is negligible. Here you can see at point A there is a weight of 40 kilograms. So you all know why the weight is there. When the road is not blocked, that is when the vehicles have to pass through, the barrier has to be like this so that vehicles can pass through that. It, they can travel under that. So the weight keeps the rod in this position. But whenever they want to block the road, whenever they want to pull the barrier down, what they can do is there is a string attached here that is used to suspend the weight M. So when the weight is attached there, the barrier will come down. Or else they have to have the rope, they have to pull it down and tie it to another rod or something kept on this side so that the barrier is horizontal like that. So the vehicles know that the road is blocked. You would have seen this near railway crossings as well. Some of the railway crossings that are operated manually. So there you would have seen this road barrier. So this is the setup. I am sure you all have understood what happens there. So the road barrier will rot rotate along this point B. And here you can see the distance is 2 meters between A and B. The weight hung at, suspended at A is 40 kilograms. Between B and C there is a distance of 3 meters and the weight M is suspended there. So here the rod can move this way or this way. This side will be clockwise, this, way, this side will be anti-clockwise moment of force. So with that understanding students, we will look at the questions given. First one, what is the advantage of fixing B point closer to A than C? Now you can see normally under equilibrium, moment of force on this side that is clockwise should be equal to moment of force on the other side that is anti-clockwise. So here when the distance is less, the weight has to be more. When the distance is more, the weight that needs to be suspended here becomes less. So that is easy to lift and attach here or even it will be easier to pull the barrier down. That is one advantage. Then the other thing is this whole distance has to cover the road. That length, this part B to C has to cover the road so that you can block the road also completely. So there are two advantages. So that is what we need to write here. What is the advantage of fixing point B closer to A than C? So we can say then a weight less than 40 kilogram 
can be used as m to bring the barrier to equilibrium so that is the advantage also although i said it is needed to cover the road you don't have to really write it here but because that is not relevant to moment of force but you all can remember that advantage is also there then the next question what will be the value of load m that is used to keep the rod in equilibrium so what will happen at equilibrium clockwise moment equals anti clockwise moment so then clockwise moment is 40 but it is in kilograms so we need to make it to newtons multiplied by 10 into distance you can see 2 meters that is equal to the weight m into 3 meters so when you rearrange 40 into 10 into 2 divided by 3 will be equal to m so if we calculate the value i will do it on this side If we calculate the value, you can multiply 2 into 40, 80 into 10, 800 divided by 3. So, M will be equal to 800 divided by 3. So, roughly that is going to be in Newtons. You can leave it as it is or else we can simplify that value. So, when we divide 800 by 3, you will get the value as 2, 6, 6. It will go on as 266.66 or we can write it as 267 Newton. Even if you leave it at this, that is okay student. So, the value is going to be 267 Newton. So, you can see that will be approximately 26 or 27 kilograms that would be enough so there we have 40 kilogram weight here it is only 27 kilogram weight so you can understand why it is the point b is closer to point a and not point c then the third question write down a change that can be done to keep the rod at equilibrium by reducing the weight of m what can we do so in the diagram students you all can see a is two meters away from point b what if we bring the a a bit closer to point b then again moment of force will decrease so obviously the weight that we need to suspend at point c will decrease so that is one way otherwise we can increase the distance between points b and c easier one is to bring this decrease the distance of a b so if we write the answers write down a change that can be done to keep the rod at equilibrium by reducing the weight of a so there we can say decrease the distance between points A and B. So, as an option, remember students, you can also increase the distance of B to C. That also can help you to reduce the weight of A. Or I can write it as or increase 
the distance b to c that also will help to keep the rod bed equilibrium so i am sure you all would have understood this question and you would have also given the correct answer with that students i will move on to the next question extra question 40 a uniform meter ruler is suspended from its midpoint a weight of 12 newton was suspended at the 10 centimeter mark and a weight of y was suspended at the 80 centimeter mark as shown in the diagram so here you can see students this is the diagram a meter ruler so 10 40 50 80 you can see so it the zero mark is here 100 centimeter mark is here and it has been suspended at the 50 centimeter mark that's the midpoint so if there is a weight hanging at the 10 centimeter mark the distance between the midpoint and the 12 newton force is 40 centimeters whereas the distance between the weight y and the midpoint is 30 centimeter distance so and also students you have to remember we need to convert these to meters so 40 centimeter has to be divided by 100 so that you get the value as 0.4 meters the same way if we convert 30 centimeters to meters it will be equal to 0.3 meters always the units have to be in newton meters so calculate the moment of force caused by 12 newton force Second question, write an equation to show the equilibrium of the ruler under the moment of forces. And the final one, find the value of y. So those are the questions, we will answer them one by one. The first one, calculate the moment of force caused by the 12 Newton weight. So you can see the diagram there students, it's easy to calculate. Moment is equal to F into D. So, what is F? 12 Newton force and already I told you all we converted 40 centimeters to be meters that is 0.4 meters. So, the answer will be 4.8 Newton meter. 12 into 0.4, 4.8 Newton meters. Then if we write, look at the second question, write an equation to show the equilibrium of the ruler under the moment of forces so under equilibrium what will happen the clockwise moment moment will be equal to anti clockwise moment that is the concept when there is equilibrium so what is the clockwise moment that is y so that will be y into 0 0.3 meters that is equal to 12 newton into 0 0.4 meters you have to write this equation students you can't just write clockwise moment equals anti clockwise moment you have to show the equation then find the value of y so it's easy for us we have already written the equation we need to rearrange y into 0 0.3 equals 12 newton into 0 0.4 meters. So this is also meters. If you rearrange y is equal to 12 newton into 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.3. So when we simplify these 3 and 12, 4. So 4 into 4, 16 newton. So, the value of y is 16 newton. So, I am sure students you were able to answer all these correctly. Moment of force 12 newton into 0.4 meters, 4.8 newton meters. Then, this is the equation y into 0 0.3 meters equals 12 newton into 0 0.4 meters. And using that, when we find y, we get the value as 16 newton. With that students, I will move on to the last question, extra question 15, a similar question here. A uniform meter ruler is suspended from its midpoint. So you know it is the 50 centimeter mark. A weight of 80 Newton was suspended at the 30 centimeter mark as shown in the diagram given below. So if this is the 30 centimeter mark, what will this be? 30, 50, so this has to be 20 centimeters. Those are the information that you need to get from the diagram. 
calculate the moment of force caused by the 80 newton weight and the second one another weight of 40 newton needs to be suspended towards the other end to bring the meter ruler to equilibrium where should you suspend the 40 newton weight so those are the questions we will answer them one by one the first question calculate the moment of force caused by the 80 newton weight so what is moment force into distance force is 80 newton and the distance we will quickly go back and check we calculated it as 20 centimeters so that is what you have to write but do you leave it as 20 centimeters no divide by 100 it will be in meters so that's going to be 80 newton into 0 0.2 meters that is going to be 16 newton meter 80 into 0 0.2 16 newton meter then with that the last part of the question another weight of 40 newton needs to be suspended towards the other end to bring the meter ruler to equilibrium where should you suspend the 40 newton weight so what will happen f1 into d1 should be equal to f2 into d2 so f1 into d1 we have already found it as 16 newton meter what is the other weight 40 newton we need to find the distance so 16 divided by 40 will be the distance that will be equal to 4 and 10 so 4 over 10 is going to be 0 0.4 meter is d so if it is the 50 centimeter mark that is the center 0 0.4 meters is equal to 40 centimeters so we can say 40 centimeters from the center or you can say at the 90 centimeter mark why is that midpoint is 50 this is 40 centimeters from the midpoint so 50 plus 40 90 centimeter mark so with that students i have come to the end of this chapter so from all the questions I have discussed, I am sure you would have got a good idea about turning effect of force, moment of force and couple of forces. And also you know to answer different types of questions.